Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. This evening's very special guest is making a reappearance on our show. He's a favorite of our show. It's Nate Angel. Hello and greetings. Hello, Nate. Thanks for having me back. We debated it. <laughs> we decided to give you another chance. I know. I want to redeem myself this time. Can I? It's possible. There remains to be seen. Why don't you start by uh, telling everyone where they can find you on Twitter? Well, if you want to find me on Twitter, you should look under my Twitter name, which is um, Holotl, X-O-L-O-T-L. Mm, I have typed that Twitter name on my iPhone so much that my iPhone now auto-completes it. That's how it should be. Yeah. And all you out there in listening lands, I want you to type it on your iPhone enough times that it auto-completes. Do you remember when, um, and <clears> we'll get to the meat of the, of the show in a moment, but do you remember when the Twitter clouds were the big popular thing? Yes. And you used to be able to look and tell how often you tweeted about something by looking at the biggest word in your Twitter cloud? Yes. Those have not been popular for a while. I, I think I'm coming up on 10,000 tweets, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make a new Twitter cloud for 10,000. I think I should make it. I, I'm embarrassed by the number of tweets I have. I can't what are you even, at now? I can't. You can, you can check. I, I really... Let's, let's just take a quick look. It's a very large number of tweets. I am curious. I'm curious, too. It's, it's, it's a large number. It's not as many tweets as Aaron Hockley, I don't think. Because Aaron Hockley is the tweet he has master. He swear about uh, Windows software all day long. Well, yeah, he's swearing about Windows software he's now because he's a now. Macintosh yeah. boy. Yeah, um, you were up to, oh, 11,149. Yeah. yeah, I think it might be time for me to make a new tweet cloud. <laughs> yeah, I think cloud. it's time for a new tweet cloud. I think I was back in the 5,000s the last time I had a tweet cloud. I hope I didn't break 10,000 while I wasn't looking. Did you? Ooh, 9,866. Ooh, it's close. I've got like 144. 34? It's very, can very you the close. Thing? 134 tweets left to go. All right, let's see if we can do it tonight. Okay, that would be a great idea. So we agree <clears> that <throat> after this evening's episode, we will all make new tweet clouds. Let's bring the tweet cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Move on. I'm actually planning to sleep in my tweet cloud tonight. <laughs> I'm planning to sleep in all sorts of clouds tonight. People who listen to the hardcore tech episode are going, what? What's going on here? <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Let's get to the... I'm joking. Let's get to the techie part. We can we can talk about tweet clouds and sleep in fluffy unicorns and bunnies later. Um, what's going on with Nate? You have a, a, a multitude of projects. I do. What are we going to start with? Well, I'd actually like to start with um, first a shout out. Mm -hmm. It is Rail Dornfest's birthday today. It's Rail's birthday too. Yeah, and I think we need to say happy birthday to him. Happy birthday, Rail! Happy birthday! <clears throat> Just Can like yesterday, it was Brahms' birthday. And uh, Craig from Toonlet. And Craig from Toonlet. But so, you know who else's birthday is today? So I just want no. to say Rain Snyder. No way. Hey. And that sneaky little devil was on the show earlier with me. And he didn't mention it. So just sitting there talking to me, and I had no idea it was his birthday. So I, I just want to say something here. Since I really don't have anything queued up in the graphics for birthday, I'm running our 100 episode <laughs> lower third with the fireworks. There's fireworks so, nice. on it. It's 100 episodes and happy birthday to everybody. So that's for you, <laughs> Rail and Ryan and... Brom. Brom. And Craig. Craig from oh, two days ago. Oh, and we were talking to somebody at the... Uh, we're, I can't remember who it was. We were talking to somebody... At the conference, and his birthday was today too. Clearly, May Portland Tech. It's like it's a very powerful. Moment. Yes, it's like the black hole of the Portland tech scene. <clears throat> so, yeah. Speaking of tech. Speaking of tech. <laughs> speaking of technology, um, what kind of projects are you working on? What do you want to talk th about? There's actually a couple different things I wanted to talk about, and um, it's entirely possible that we won't be able to get through them all because there's such a wide variety. So let's, and after all, we're only human. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start at the beginning. Um, and th the thing I'm most excited about, because the beta is launching today, actually, is um, an iPhone app that I have been working on as a side project with mm -hmm. my good friend, John Ellis, who mm -hmm. you don't know. I don't know John. Because John Ellis has the unfortunate destiny to live in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm very yes. sorry, John. I know. Sorry for your... 
his yeah. destiny. destiny. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but he may come up for OS Bridge, and so you may have the chance to meet him there. But that he, would be lovely. He's an awesome guy and a great developer. Um, and uh, he's now devoted himself full time to iPhone development and is the author of such great um, iPhone apps as iTunes, which you may see seen in my tweets, which mm -hmm. is the one where you can decorate a photo in cartoon. your iPhone with a little cartoon thought and speech bubbles. <clears throat> I've actually been trying to get him together with Craig from iTunes to produce the iTunes iPhone app. Craig from iTunes? You mean Craig I mean Craig from, from Tunelit. Tune Sorry. Okay, See, I okay. get iTunes and Tunelit mixed up. They, it's it's like a match made in heaven. I it is. It totally is. Yeah. And there's been a little talk about it, but it hasn't happened yet. So anyway, John and I have been collaborating for the past um, couple of months on an iPhone game that we call Hide and Tweet. And it's a multiplayer online location-based game mm -hmm. for the iPhone. And <clears throat> the reason why I find it really interesting to work in this is the you know, I'm kind of an open source guy, and the iPhone isn't exactly the most open platform that you've ever seen. <laughs> but the things that I find interesting about the iPhone is the actual device itself has so many um, interesting capabilities built into it. Mm -hmm. First of all, it has this very small size. It has great abilities to connect to networks, either through cell or, or uh, internet Wi-Fi. And it has the touchscreen interface, which brings up all sorts of new possibilities. It also has the accelerometer, which allows you to, the actual position of the phone itself can be okay. incorporated uh, in. Thank you yes. for explaining so I didn't have to ask. <laughs> you know how you can tip it and it yeah. does things, right? If you turn it on its side, it yeah, changes it flips, the website or the right. photo. Yeah. And that's just like the most basic, you know, outcome of that. Mm -hmm. But you have that capability. And then it also always knows where it is mm -hmm. because it has the built-in GPS technology, mm -hmm. right? And it has the ability to take pictures and in some cases video right now only if you jailbreak if you, it. If you jail, right so you really have in your pocket this device that knows where it is it can take pictures it can communicate with the entire world um, and it has at least two kinds of human interfaces that we're not totally used to that we don't use in other computers the touch screen and the, the accelerometer mm -hmm. and just that combination of things in this little device i think makes it a really interesting platform to do things with it's it's I'm, I won't say it's unexplored, but you know the fact that it's mobile and all that's packaged in this little box I think is is somewhat unexplored, mm -hmm. and I'm sure at, uh, at Web Visions that people who are far deeper into this than I am were talking about that as well, <clears throat> and they know who they are. You know who you are. I talked to several <coughs> of them. Yeah, there A was little. some discussion of iPhone. Yes, I can imagine. The other thing though that's interesting about it is, you know. It, as controlling as Apple is, the the iTunes application distribution network actually makes it possible for almost anyone to develop a, a very modest piece of software and distribute it, possibly for money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of like the eBay of software applications or something. You know, basically, you just. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's laughing at something that you said or. <laughs> I'm a little distracted by the uh, Dr. Normal's <laughs> you can't sit <laughs> activity still. over there. He keeps moving around and laughing at things. And Let me just say that you can update our show notes on aboutus.org slash strangeoflife.com. That's true, you can. Aboutus.org slash strangeoflife.com. I wonder who's responsible for that. Hmm. Hmm. Could it be? I have no idea. But anyway, oh. so... <laughs> I'm sorry, I do. I just... I won't need to continue. So... <laughs> And I tight tech episode, might I say. <laughs> All right, now don't start critiquing it and second guessing it already. We just because see now started. we're gonna waste a whole nother like two minutes telling you that you need to stop I'm it. Joking. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, I thought you were serious. I am. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but at any rate, so more directly about Hayden tweet. You know, I mean, one of the things that has <laughs> <laughs> it's a great name. Right? It is a really great name. Um. So the neat thing about Hayden. Are you tweet, sure it's about an iPhone? Oh, I don't know. Dr. Normal, this is the tech episode, and Nate and I are trying our best to behave ourselves. We are having an actual conversation over here. So the thing... You can excuse yourself. Did you turn off the air conditioning yet? <laughs> so um, only recently has there been a lot of stuff coming out of the iPhone that's actually like kind of multiplayer game oriented. And uh, so we were we were happy to be able to make it kind of early... 
entry into this. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, we're opening up the beta today, and anyone who has an iPhone Ooh. and a Twitter account... I have an iPhone. ...can go to hideandtweet.com. That's hide, the letter hide. N, tweet. Mm -hmm. Hide, hide and, and tweet. tweet. Like, okay. Like hide, hide and, and seek. Mm -hmm. Hideandtweet.com and sign up for the beta. And... Um, there's a whole bunch of reasons why you have to sign up for the beta rather than just it magically appearing for you, but that well, has to do with the closed system. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was discussing that with someone earlier today. But at any rate, it's basically the idea of playing hide and seek. Mm -hmm. um, the old schoolyard schoolyard game that we all had so much fun playing and still do because we have little kids. Mm -hmm. And But transferred to the iPhone. And so what it does is um, you get together with a group of people or if you're alone, you play with these virtual ghosts. And the ghosts play hide-and-seek with you virtually. And they appear magically in a map interface, like mm -hmm. a Google Map interface. And you have to chase them down, whether they're real humans or the virtual ghosts that you're playing with, and take a picture of them before they take a picture of the home base that you established. Wow. And so it's it's just like the classic rules of hide and seek, which I actually I didn't play the classic hide and seek when I was little. I didn't play that the hiders could come back and tag home base. No, neither did I. But if you look it up on Wikipedia, which as we know is the is the record of all things true and mm -hmm. right. You can't you can't put anything that's not true on Wikipedia. Exactly. I think there's um, a filter named Stephen Walling that keeps that from happening. Um <clears throat> that's actually the formal game is that the hiders can can try to tag home base and if you don't catch them before they tag home base they win so at any rate and all the communications in the game take place over twitter so you're basically playing this multi-user game where you're trying to snap pictures of of these people or they're trying to snap pictures of home and you're taunting each other um you're you know gloating over having tagged them um over twitter and if you don't have any friends, or none of your friends are nearby and ready to play, the game automatically allows you to play with these four ghosts. And actually, Twigs invented the personalities for these ghosts. So the ghosts are Vetch, Scuffle, Pleat, and Calaboose. Vetch, Scuffle, Pleat, and... Calaboose. Calaboose. And all those are real words, and they're at... Those are their Twitter names, at Vetch, at Scuffle, at... Um, Pleat and at Calaboose, and they play with you if you don't have any handy friends to play hide and, hide and tweet with. And so basically, instead of um, playing with real people, the ghosts appear and start wandering around on the map, and you have to go on real streets and chase down to their actual virtual location and take a picture of them. And they actually appear in the heads-up display. I'll show you what it looks like. I'd here. like to see that. I, I see in the future a lot of designated drivers coming in handy. <laughs> I see the scavenger hunt versions of this game exactly. uh, with the uh, with kegs. And so we're going to make you home base. I have to take a picture of home base to establish it. And okay. again, because the iPhone knows where it is, mm -hmm. it knows where I took that picture, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to use that photo as home base. And that means as long as you don't move around, it's not a good idea to use a moving home base, right? <laughs> I, I'm, pretty, the other players, I'm pretty stationary for yeah, a while here. You're going to be here for at least 15 minutes, right? Now all the other players are going to try to reach you mm -hmm. as the home base and take a picture of you before, um, before. So if Dr. Normal were playing, he'd have it easy. Yeah, he, he's already close enough to tag you, actually. Yeah, well, he could so take So you can picture. see who's playing. I've got mine tethered here. I can unplug oh, yeah. it out. Let me see. <clears throat> You're playing. I'm it. Uh-huh. Because Calibus, I started the round. Bench, scuffle, pleat, and I'm home base. Right. I am uh, zero yards. To the south southeast. You are zero yards away from yourself. What yes. If I move my <laughs> hand over. That is very cool. And then you, you can go to the map interface and. Um, it's a little confused about where home base is. I think actually. Why are we in Oaks Park? Um. Maybe it also interfaces with Shazau, and that's where we told Shazau roughly that, <laughs> that our house houses. was. You don't want to give it too exact. I know, 107 yards to the south-southwest. Oh, no, Calaboose is. Yeah, you can see the ghost. And if you tap on those mm -hmm. dots, 
the ghost profiles come up and you can tap through to them. Are they are they taunting me? They're... I touched base, hide and tweet. And there's a twit pick. Yeah, so one of the ghosts made it home before I caught them, since I'm it. Because you're not moving. Exactly. Actually, I'm what my daughter calls puppy guarding, because I'm standing right next to base. <laughs> you're puppy guarding. I don't know where they, does Kay call it puppy guarding? Oh, look, the ghost is on my head. Yep. No, she does not. Yep, so that means the ghost took a picture of itself at home base saying like... It went. I shot myself. Hi. <laughs> exactly. And so it interfaces with TwitPic as well. So all the pictures that are taken in the middle of the game um, get uploaded to TwitPic. That is very cool. And so we're doing this beta, So um, and we really need help testing it out because it's a fairly complicated thing, actually, all the mm -hmm. different you know, yes, communication things going on. Yes, it seems very complicated. I mean, the game is actually really easy um, and fun to play, even with the ghosts. Mm -hmm. um, and with people it's even better but we need people to kind of test it out give us feedback and so what's the website again all you need to do is have an iphone and a twitter account iphone and twitter account obviously if you don't have a twitter account you can sign up for one and that's at hide and tweet.com hide and tweet.com right and right. or you can check out um at hide and tweet on twitter very cool is the main uh the main address for it or if you go to vetch scuffle pleat or calaboose you'll also find it very cool. You can follow any of those little ghosts right? who may or may not sit on your head and take a picture of themselves. So if you want a ghost to take a picture of yourself on your head, be home you base. Hide or be home base, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So that's, that's one of the things that's been going on, and um, that's been really fun and interesting. I've never done any um, iPhone development before, and um, it's just, you know, there's all these complexities to building a multiplayer game for that platform, and it's been really fun. So we're actually uh, we're hoping to be able to launch the you know the full version of the game through the Apple App Store sometime in the next month or so um, cool. once the beta test is over. But I, again, I strongly encourage you if you've got an iPhone that sounds interesting, sign up. Um, probably this weekend we're going to have a kind of hide and tweet meetup, tweet up. Uh, Rails probably going to participate. Mr. Birthday Boy. Happy um, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> and um and he's uh, gonna hate you by the time this episode <laughs> so if you want to follow me a little on twitter i'll be i'll be tweeting about where any tweet ups in portland are um there's a big conclave of people playing it in phoenix obviously where john ellis the developer is mm -hmm. and um you know but you don't have to be in portland or phoenix to sign up for the beta so it'll just be more fun if you have friends nearby to play with yeah you. i mean it's still very fun with the ghosts because they actually they run around and you have to chase them down but um because you can't take a picture of them until you're within a certain proximity of where they actually are. Very they cool. actually are. Where they are. Yeah. In real life. Exactly. All right. What's so, next? What's, so what's the next, next topic? Well, the other thing um, that I've been working on that is really uh, near and dear to my heart is um, a plan to save education in the United States from itself. And I might have it mentioned this saving. on Twitter, it does. I mean, you guys are parents, right? You have a kid in school. Mm -hmm. I do too. And I work in the education sector a lot um, as part of my job and have for quite a while. And one of the biggest problems with education right now is standardized testing. I don't know how you guys feel about standardized testing. but uh, Luckily, still at the age that our daughter is, standardized testing is not a reality. I think it's third grade that it starts. In fact. My oldest. Oh, did I we say that? Have a, we have a button for that. <laughs> okay. I mean, Bunny, my, my eldest, um, mm -hmm. took her first battery of standardized tests this spring, I believe. So, yes, it has started. <sighs> wow. But, I mean, all of us have taken standardized tests, right? Yeah. Even those of us who were raised by wolves. And um, standardized tests do not do a good job of measuring what you know. They measure your test-taking skills. They, they measure your test-taking skills. And how well the, the teachers have trained you to take a test. And they measure, um, unfortunately, they also measure your socioeconomic status because it's been demonstrated that people with higher socioeconomic statuses always do better on these kind of standardized tests that we normally use. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, it doesn't measure how smart you are or how well you know the subject. It measures how well you do on testing with this kind of dominant, you know, socioeconomic language and experience that a test expects you to have in order to take it. Now the sad thing about tests though is that 
not only do we use them to measure how well students have learned things, but we also use them to measure how good schools are. Yeah. Right? And so, and this has gotten especially bad under the No Child Left Behind work that um, <clears throat> former President Bush left us with. And um, so we're actually evaluating how well teachers teach and how well schools educate using standard, standardized test scores to measure that. And we, so we already know that they're not measuring what children actually know. Mm -hmm. And now we're also using to evaluate how good the schools are that are teaching them. And so the whole system is kind of broken, right? <clears throat> so I'm part of a group of people that is focused on an alternative way to evaluate um, how well people are learning and how well people are teaching. Use, instead of standardized tests, um, using portfolios. Mm -hmm. And no, I haven't ever talked about this before uh, on Strange Love Live. No, you haven't. Or with you. No, and I'm happy that you are. <laughs> yeah. And it's, um, it actually it does have a technology angle um, <clears throat> because portfolios is, and I'll just explain it briefly because a lot of people have in their mind different ideas of what a portfolio really is, right? You know, there's the artist portfolio and, you know, the different kinds of portfolios that you might think of. But... The portfolio, when you distill it down for education, is really the act of collecting together the work that you might have done in classes or in other circumstances. Maybe you've done something extracurricular. Mm -hmm. So you collect together those experiences and works that you've made, and then you select out of that group pieces of evidence or works that you've made that demonstrate key um, sort of moments of experience or learning that, milestones. Yeah, milestones that lead towards some sort of larger learning goal. So not, you know, um, what is 2 plus 2 equal, but, you know, are you able to calculate or um, not... Uh, Johnny it, is able to write this essay uh, using three paragraphs that all connect together as a beginning, middle, and end. Right. And use punctuation. Right. Or, uh, um, you know, being able to make persuasive arguments is a larger learning goal, for instance. Yeah. And so you might, as a, if you're building a portfolio, you're going to look in your, your you know, collection of works that you've produced and you're going to pick out some and say, these demonstrate my ability to make a persuasive argument best mm -hmm. and, and here's why. And you're going to reflect on that, right? You're going to, so you're not only just picking the work and just plunking them in place and saying, here's the evidence. You're also talking about why those pieces of evidence demonstrate that you've reached that learning goal mm -hmm. or that you've made progress toward reaching that learning goal. And so it's this, um, this combination of collecting your work, selecting pieces of work out of it, and reflecting on that work that lead toward building a really effective portfolio that demonstrates your progress toward higher learning goals rather than simple answers to questions like you might find on a test. So correct me if I'm wrong, but this would also uh, necessitate smaller classroom sizes because you would have to have the time to go through each each child's work yes. and then to have the teacher report back on that it, it is <clears throat> it is a more labor intensive um, I'm not activity saying that than smaller sizes. classroom sizes are, are uh, as a parent I dream of smaller classroom sizes right. um, I, I'm not saying that's a bad thing I'm just right. saying with the you know the the state that we have left our educational system and it's a it's a very broad jump Yes. from one thing to another right is there a plan to get that into place or right is there a strategy that they're presenting there is and that's what i've been working on and, and this is a national effort you know it's um it's uh spearheaded by the uh american association of colleges and universities um which is a washington dc based nonprofit organization and they're thinking about it primarily from the college and university um angle mm -hmm. but also extending it all the way down through K-12, so because it really affects all different levels of, yeah. uh, of education. And you know, p part of the problem with testing and class sizes is that the you know, testing is actually a mechanism by which we can continue to have large class. I mean, they, they, it ends up yeah. being this kind of vicious circle where yeah. you know, the testing supports the system that allows for the larger classes, and then we're in this um, cul-de-sac that we can never get out of. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> there's a lot of universities that are actually, including Portland State here in Portland, um, that are actually already using portfolios very effectively. Um, and it is, it is a different educational model. It's not having, you know, 250 people in a course and, um, and then, 
you know, having a Scantron fill in the bubble standardized test at the end in order to evaluate them. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so the reason why it, it ends up hinging on technology is there's actually a, all the portfolio technology that exists now is kind of getting in the way of implementing portfolio practices on a wider scale mm -hmm. because basically most of the technology that exists is just like giant electronic file cabinets you know it's like file storage oh, i did something and i threw it up in this uh I think that might have been me. Oh, I'd, <laughs> he's got all sorts of whirring noises going on over there and then there was the creaking so i had no idea what was going on continue please i, I think it was your laptop actually i think it's me in my old age i've started to creak a little <laughs> bit um, so what we're doing is this, you know, the technology is not really um, assisting in the process of spreading this practice more widely. Mm -hmm. It's actually kind of hampering it. And there are a lot of different um, commercial vendors out there. Um, there's some open source projects that have portfolio software. But none of it really um, helps people um, get engaged in this practice throughout their scholarly career. So like, you know, you start to connect things you did in kindergarten and move it forward through your K-12 experience mm -hmm. and then maybe it continues to grow as you move through college. Like that's not really possible right now. Yeah. Because you think about, I mean, if the thing that probably comes closest to this is something like Flickr. Mm -hmm. You know, you think of someone who uses Flickr or, or Twitter in a way, Twitter's like a, a verbal equivalent of it, you know, that kind of microblogging is they're, they're making entries in, in a portfolio of sorts over time and then maybe through tagging. Just maybe not as selectively as they would yeah, I mean, it may not be as selective, but there, and it's not focused on the educational experience necessarily, yeah. but the, the process is sort of similar. You know, they're making a collection, and then in Flickr, for instance, you know, people are making sets and tagging things, and, you know, they're, they're, they are making selections out of that larger stream of stuff that they've uploaded to Flickr and kind of making collections out of it. And then they may indeed end up presenting, you know, collections from Flickr as you know, evidence of something larger than, than just the collection. But if you just think of the technology of Flickr, that's, that actually does a better job of having someone track their activity mm -hmm. over time than almost anything the education system does. I mean, what we have now is you get out of one level of education and you walk away with a diploma and some grades. Yeah. Right? What does that say? You know, it's like, hi, I'm Nate Angel. I got an A and a diploma. Actually, Nate Angel was raised by. Yeah, I actually but... didn't get any grades. <laughs> <laughs> As those I'm of you who were at back this <laughs> might have seen, but um, so at any rate, we're in. What we're going to do about this first is we're inviting. Um, we're actually inspired by something the Smithsonian did. Smithsonian launched a uh, Smithsonian 2.0 gathering. Uh, I think it was last summer in D.C. And what they did is they said, you know, we've got this amazing collection of stuff. And we don't really know how to take it to the next level. So we're going to invite a whole bunch of people who may have nothing to do with the Smithsonian or museums. And we're going to invite them here and we're going to see, like, help us think through what we should do. Mm -hmm. And, like, a whole bunch of really interesting stuff came out of that that kind of turned the Smithsonian inside out. So they're tweeting and blogging and, you know, the, the collections of the Smithsonian are moving outside the walls of the Smithsonian in all sorts of interesting ways. And so we were inspired by that. Just, like, let's bring some fresh thinking into this. And so we... Um, we're having a meeting um, that's um, kind of an invite-only event, um, but we're gathering together a whole bunch of people from inside the portfolio, the educational portfolio community, and then a whole bunch of kind of interesting thinkers who have nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try to bring them together into a room to try to think through how we could break out of this, the, this cul-de-sac that portfolios are in already. Um, and use it as a way to kind of wean the United States off of standardized testing as a as a way to evaluate students and teachers. I think when you get more information on that, when and when that's happened, we'd love to have you come back and talk a little bit more about it. It's it's gonna. I mean, if it if it pans out at all, it's gonna be really interesting and exciting. But yeah. Yeah. Right now, I mean, all I can say is that we're doing that. It's a problem, and I hope other people are just aware of what's going on in education and are thinking about how it's kind of broken in a fundamental way right now. Uh, I don't know anyone that would disagree with the the state of education is just in disarray. It does seem that way to me. Yeah. And here we are. We got these little kids that we're just launching into it. <laughs> here, go. And we're telling them that they need to learn and they need to, you know, discover and explore and be who they are and, and make the best of what they can. And then we're shoving them. At no longer scantrons. 
right. we're sitting there in front of the computer and saying, click the bubble, click the bubble. At least right. they don't have to get the hand cramp. But right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, filling out those bubbles. Oh, I finally did it later in life. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it's not fun. It's not fun. But uh, that's that's one thing that's going on. And then there's a third thing, too. I, don't I think know we, if have we have time, time for one more. We yeah. have time for one more? Yes. Dr. Normal says we have time for one more, and I'll make this quick. Um, it better be the button on your shirt. It just makes the people who are watching in the chat room waiting for it to become unlocked again. The chat room is locked? We'll talk about that in after hours. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, new viewers. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So let's let's move on yes. to, to item number three. And, and in a way, this is more of an announcement than anything else, but... Um, as you well know, because you're going to be a part of it, um, the Open Source Bridge Conference will be here in Portland in June. Three weeks, I believe. Yes. And as part of that, um, we're planning to hold another uh, of a series of events that we've held um, for Day On. And Day On is an organization that we started to help connect geeks who want to help with nonprofits that need geekly help. Um, geekly assistance, I like to call it. And so the idea behind Day On, it was formed around Martin Luther King Day this past year, and it was just a day on of volunteering for geeks to help nonprofits with their technology help. And a lot of it comes down to nonprofits just don't really know what to do. Uh, they, don't, they don't know where to get good advice about basic technology things. You know, mm -hmm. there's all these people saying, we'll sell you this, or you can buy that, or I'll make a website for $5,000, or, you know, you need networking or Windows software, or whatever it is. And especially when it's a nonprofit, throwing money at it is not a yeah, viable solution. Right. They can't just be like, oh, we'll spend our way out of this problem. And so one of the main things that we try to do is just connect geeks who can give good, basic, unbiased advice to nonprofit organizations about whatever it is. Now that doesn't mean they don't get hands-on help too, but so we did an event at Martin Luther King Day. We've had another event in between because we partner, partnered with a couple of um, organizations that bring together nonprofits like the Nonprofit Technology Education, uh, Nonprofit Technology Network, sorry, I always get their name wrong, that's at n10.org, it's mm -hmm. one of our partners. And so at OS Bridge, what we're gonna do is we're gonna form another kind of help desk where geeks are gonna, are gonna staff a help desk inviting nonprofits to bring their technology questions and problems to this help desk. So that'll be going on throughout OS Bridge. And um, so nonprofits get the help. And at the same time, we're also gonna solicit um, uh, kind of um, uh, practical uh, projects from particular nonprofits that need kind of more focused attention. And then we're gonna get, form teams at OS Bridge of geeks, I'm calling them ninja teams. Ninja teams. That are going to go in and address, you know. Any their, geek would want to be on a ninja team. Exactly. We're going to have little outfits. But we do have these nice little buttons. Mm -hmm. And um, those geek team, geek ninja teams will be, um, you know, taking on a, a very, you know, bite-sized, doable project for a nonprofit um, during the, you know, starting out at the, uh, the OS Bridge Conference, the Open Source Bridge Conference. I think that's fantastic. How are you getting the word out to the nonprofits about this? We're, we're doing it through, um, through our partnerships with these organizations that already have nonprofit ties. So like the Nonprofit Technology Network, um, plan to be working with Meyer Memorial Trust, which is a, um, a, uh, a granting organization here in Oregon that works with a whole you know, uh, network of nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. And um, some other, some other, you know, promotional venues just to get a word out to nonprofits. Because actually, the geeks—it's very easy to get the geeks organized and out there, but the nonprofits are a little harder to herd together. So, the geeks have the technology to be they do. organized. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Exactly. Well, I think it's uh, I think it's time for us to say good night and for us to uh, start to move on to after hours. But uh, more on the OS Bridge. If you'd like to know more about OS Bridge, you can join us next week when we're going to talk to Audrey and Selena about OS Bridge, they're the uh, two of the organizers. So it should be a good time. Maybe we'll get a chance to talk a little bit more about everything that's going to be going on at the OS Bridge conference. I'll be watching. Excellent. Uh, stay tuned for After Hours. We'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs>